I'm just waiting for a few more people. How are we all doing? Are we all doing well during this this terrible time? <laughs> yeah. I did have to I did have to shave the stubble this morning though, so that that was something different today. <laughs> oh you did. <laughs> I I've just been using I've just I've just been using trimmers since I've been home because I don't go anywhere, right? So I always have like a three D old beard happening across my head and everything. <laughs> but I decide I should at least shave my face today for everybody. Right. So we've got a few more people join. Hi Tom. Hi Joy. Hello. So this is exciting because we all want to get back to work, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm waiting for a few more people. Uh, what made you come up with the idea to talk about um, uh, going back to work? <laughs> well, actually, uh, one of my key vendors um, has created this document that I'm going to that I'm going to give out today. Um, so I got it about the same time you asked me if I could do a presentation, and I thought that would you know timing would be perfect for that because. I have had um, a lot of issues with clients working from home. You know, security is not what it should be, or just you know general issues connecting because everyone's just kind of set everything up on the on the by the seat of their pants shall we say um assuming people are wearing pants at home these days uh but uh that that's really where the idea came came from to put it on here and in the bonus is that the my vendors also put in stuff outside of tech you know like uh, other things that you consider about your staff your your office in general and and relations with your customers so okay so just Saw someone. Oh, Heidi mm -hmm. showed up. He just sent me an email oh, saying he I wasn't thought you coming. Oh, I each other. <laughs> he's he's the vendor I just mentioned. <laughs> good morning, to all. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Linda. I'm one of the co-founders of the SBCN. I am just looking to see if we have anybody else waiting in the waiting room. So, Chris, um, thank you for agreeing to do this presentation today. We're very happy to see you. Thank you all for coming. And uh, I think we'll get going and listen to how we can all get back into the workplace. Okay. Is everyone seeing my nice little splash page there? That was yes, good. thank you. <laughs> well, I don't normally use this as a say. I use something else. So carry on, Chris. Um, well, I should start off with saying... Um, I am the guy that was in that picture. I'm not his older brother. Uh, Linda and Dave used an older picture from about eight years ago, and I think it was mostly because if you saw my picture now, you might have thought that this was some kind of biker gang presentation and may not have shown up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it was all kind of last minute. I, I get it. It's fine. It's fine. I'm going to blame this on the fact we've adopted a kitten, and she, she's lovely, but she's uh, driving me wild, so carry on. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to uh, jump right in then. Uh, so as we know, we're, right now we're under a lot of uh, restrictions, and there have been some signs of uh, things letting up from the government saying that they're going to reduce restrictions, and so which opens up the possibility of um, some offices opening up uh, relatively very soon. So now is kind of a good time to make plans uh, when those restrictions are lifted uh, because in the beginning we were all kind of scrambling and reacting with little or no planning time uh, to put a lot of stuff into place that we had to do. And while I'll be focusing on the technical aspect um, in this presentation, I'm just getting my pointer going here, um, the uh, handout at the end of the presentation is also going to cover your staff, your office, and your customers. So while this isn't a complete list, um, some of the common changes that you would have had to make with your technology could include uh, giving remote control to your staff, basically accessing their PCs from home using programs such as remote desktop, a log me in or team viewer. You could have also set up a VPN, which is a virtual private network and given staff the ability to connect to the office from home, uh, mostly for the purpose of accessing file shares. And you may have cloud sharing enabled, which uh, gives you the staff to use things like Data Workplace, Anchor, Dropbox, or Google Drive to share files. And also a lot of people are using team chat applications, uh, Zoom being one of these things, uh, but you might be using something a little more sophisticated for collaboration like Microsoft Teams, 
Slack, or Google Hangout. All of these uh, basically would be considered a uh, work from home uh, service. So with this fast change uh, to working from home, we've increased susceptibility uh, to data loss almost overnight. It's basically become a hacker's paradise because they are exploiting business, businesses with sophisticated, more sophisticated ransomware attacks, and they're leveraging basically the uncertainty of these times. Uh, transitioning to the remote workplace with personal devices uh, has made it even more difficult to keep data secured. And when uh, all this is said and done, you probably won't be abandoning uh, working from home right away, or you may have found that this has been a good thing during isolation and you want to keep it in place. Uh, either way, uh, you need to take a step back and evaluate what you will be using, uh, if for nothing else, to make sure that it is secure. And because of this uh, crisis and, and need for fast reaction, uh, many of your staff are using personal equipment not owned by your company and therefore not up to your usual IT standards. Uh, so if we look at like uh, home computers as an example, they could be using unsupported versions of Windows. Uh, anything older than Windows 8 is no longer supported, so it's not receiving uh, updates or patches to any uh, discovered vulnerabilities. The, even if it is up to date, they might be missing certain security patches and fixes. They might have insufficient virus protection. They might not be using a, a password or have simple passwords. So I think the last thing any of us want is our eight-year-old child to come over to the computer and maybe delete stuff or send off emails to our, our big clients. <laughs> uh, personal devices, uh, which are probably not too new to people. A lot, a lot of people probably are using their handhelds now for email. But uh, do keep in mind that a lot of these have simple or no passwords and very few handheld devices uh, have sufficient or any security software installed. My biggest concern is in the, is in the home network area because um, these are you know, usually off-the-shelf type of routers. They're using uh, simple Wi-Fi passwords uh, that are either easy to guess or too many people know them that, aren't, that maybe shouldn't know them. Um, they're either using no or basic encryption. And the, a lot of times they're using the default IDs and passwords on those devices that the manufacturer set up, which anybody can discover doing a Google search. So if they've somehow, the hacker somehow gets to the router, they could do whatever they want on the router and also access other areas of your network. So basically any device that is connecting to your business's data should be password protected using strong passwords, or better yet, using something like multi-factor authentication. If you're not familiar with multi-factor authentication, that is basically like a second password. You'd have an app on your phone that maybe generates a new password like every 30 seconds or so that you would have to enter after you put in your main password. Sounds like a lot of work, but you know I've been using it for a while and you kind of get used to it and it's not a big deal. I've also uh, mentioned uh, email and cloud sharing. I'm going to go into a little more detail on those because there's kind of higher those are kind of higher risk areas. If anyone wants a copy of this slide deck after I'm done, I'm more than happy to email it to you. Just send send me an email. I'm going to have my contact information at the at the end of this presentation. So let's talk about cloud cloud storage. And the first thing I want to say is not all cloud storage services are created equal. Uh, if you pick something up on the fly, you really will need to take a step back and look at its features, and abilities, and security. What you need to understand is uh, data traveling back and forth, uh, upload and download, should be encrypted going both ways. Um, if it, Do they have built-in threat management? Meaning, if a provider... Uh, detects, will the provider detect an infection such as ransomware uh, before it propagates to all your data? And can they roll it back to a previous good version? And how quickly can they do that? Uh, and as you may have given many devices access to your, to your cloud sharing, uh, can your provider manage those devices? If a device is lost, stolen, or maybe a staff member has left the company on good or bad terms, can you wipe that data from those devices remotely and block it from further access? Does the cloud storage keep logs? You may need this for compliance or to determine the root cause of an issue. You want to be able to see who accessed what, when, and what they did. And how is it backed up? How many versions of a file are kept or how far back can you recover from? 
And a lot of people don't think of this one, but what country is your data stored in? Uh, some business verticals will require that data is kept in your local country for legal issues or compliance issues. Um, that's a whole other topic that we could <laughs> discuss in another uh, a type of Zoom. Um, but uh, it can raise a lot of concerns if a legal entity in another country wants to access your data. So this one has become a bigger issue, uh, basically your email and collaboration software, uh, collaboration software being like Microsoft Teams. Uh, so since this rough shift, there's been a surge in email communication, obviously, and uh, more use of these collaboration apps. And along that course, of course, hackers' activities have increased with fraudulent and phishing emails that could compromise your, compromise your data. I know I have seen an increased amount of spam uh, going to my clients and, and to myself. Your email, though, um, should have threat protection against things like phishing. It should block known threats. Uh, even if a link or attachment is clicked on, it should be blocked or otherwise to play some sort of message to the user that this could be a threat, giving them a chance to pause and say, hey, maybe I shouldn't do this. And you want to have some kind of advanced spam protection. Now, all email services have some level of spam filtering, but it is usually quite basic and is maintained by the individual user instead of something that would encompass the company as a whole. An example being if there is a no a known um, phishing email that's going out there, if you have a kind of a, a global spam protection, you can block that email from even reaching uh, any of the inboxes of your staff. And the big one is, is your data recoverable? Uh, many people have the illusion that because the data is in the cloud, it's already backed up, and that is definitely not true. Um, and maybe you didn't know this, but both Microsoft and Google make no guarantees when it comes to restoring deleted data, whether it's from a human error or from a malicious, malicious ran ransomware attack. Don't rely on them to get your data back. So what to, pr to protect your data, what you really need is have something called SaaS protection. Uh, SaaS stands for Software as a Service, which is what Office 365 or Google's G Suite is. Uh, something that backs up your email, your team chats, your communications, so that you're assured that you can recover them from, cover it. Uh, to give you an example, this is, you know, uh, outside of COVID-19, but I've had done this many times. I've had clients come to me and say um, they had a, an employee go, and whether it's on good terms or bad, doesn't matter, and then they find that all the, e all the emails that they had, everything's been deleted and erased. Uh, now, if you're relying on Microsoft or Google to get that back, good luck. Uh, the odds of that are pretty low that you'll get it. But if you have something like a SaaS protection in place, and I've done this for clients, I just say, well, do you want it restored to the original inbox? Do you want it restored to somebody's folder? Or do you want it a shared box? And then, you know, it's back within minutes to hours, depending on how big their, their data store was. And the same goes now for things like Microsoft Teams that can be backed up as well. So any chat logs and uh, communications would be restored as well. So to kind of to kind of do a quick little overview of evaluating the technology, these are the in summary, this is what you need to do. You need to look at everything you've added since the COVID-19 restrictions started and is it still required? And do you need to adjust any of the licensing like uh, or remove devices to control your costs? Um, are any of the home devices accessing your business data are home devices accessing your business data secure and is uh, your your cloud data protected and secure and as I just mentioned is your email and data collaboration software protected and recoverable one thing I'm really uh, suggesting with my clients is to uh, create a uh, a work from home agreement that's what the WFH agreement is there uh, basically that outlines the requirements of devices uh, that are connecting to company data. Now, this may sound like you're putting the horse before the cart at this stage, but it will serve as a document that you can do an audit of what's currently connecting to and bring it up to par or take it out if necessary. And then going forward, if you're going to keep doing, doing these services, new employees, you can say, well, your computers have to meet these complexity requirements before you can be allowed to connect from home to your to your devices or to your data. 
uh, what has been difficult uh, that I've experienced as an IT person during this is uh, because people work in their home machines, there's a lot of unknown stuff out there. Uh, just connecting to the machines could sometimes be a challenge. So a couple of my clients have opted in, uh, even on a temporary basis, to add those machines to their service plan so that I get an agent on those machines and I can check that they are patched. They do have antivirus protection. So they're, you know that way we already know that those machines are qualified to be uh, connecting to their, their business data. Lost my mouse. Oh, there we are. That is kind of it in a nutshell. I know that was all very quick, but it does leave us uh, time for, for questions and answers. Uh, you can get that uh, checklist I was talking about by going to sbcnzoom.polarverse.com. Small form to fill out to do the download, but you'll get the download immediately at that point. And I have my contact information in the bottom left corner there uh, if anyone needs to contact me uh, outside of the, the Zoom for further questions. Uh, that's all I got. Back to you, Linda. <laughs> oh, so that was absolutely fantastic, Chris. It's, um, it's something we all need to look at, isn't it? The fact that we, we need to you know, be safe and know what to do. So do we have any questions? Um, so Chris, I guess I have to unmute everyone. All yeah, that would probably help. Yeah, probably all participants help. are now unmuted. So if you have any questions for Chris, please feel free to, uh, or maybe unmute all. Yeah. All participants are now unmuted, yes. Yeah, I think everybody's muted who wants to be muted. And if anybody's got any questions, I guess, Chris, I'll ask you them, yeah. won't they? Yeah, they could also do the chat if they want to bring up questions there. Or um, if you had everyone muted, they might have to click the button to unmute themselves to talk, okay. which would be the so, buttons usually in the bottom left corner of their screen. So if you have any questions, please um Mute yourself. Yep, it's all on muting now. So it, it was a it was a great presentation. I'm not very I don't do much of the techie stuff as you can tell, but um it's really <laughs> valuable um for everybody. And, and um I guess you know everyone here, Chris, in the in the meeting. Uh, I only really recognize uh, my friend Heidi <laughs> sitting there, but <laughs> I mean, I might have crossed paths with people once or twice, I'm sure. So, uh, I don't think we have any questions, do we? Do we have a question of Heather? No, I'm good. Because uh, Heather's face popped up. Um, so I guess um, I apologise for my panic at the beginning. <laughs> I was going by a list and uh, I'm not a techie person. Um, but Chris, thank you again for your time. Have you got anything to add? Um, any reminders for people before we let everybody leave? No, I think I covered it all. Like I said, uh, feel free, anybody, to email me if they uh, want to follow up on anything I've said or have any other questions. That's fine. It looks like everybody enjoyed it. And thank you. I can't type. <laughs> I'll say thank you from me. Um, what what we're doing? Uh, we, we're doing our best to make sure that all the businesses get help they need. And we're asking people like you, Chris, to come along and and basically offer your your expertise. So if anybody else wants to do a presentation for us, please, in, you know, send an information um, an email to info in Canada. And um, we'll be helping all the businesses who want to get back to work or have other questions. So I think that's the end of the meeting. Oh, you said a question. Hey, where's our coffee? Where, where's Heather get a coffee? Someone brought me coffee and I didn't realize. <laughs> 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 I just make a note here. I saw um, that Heather made a comment about didn't know that Microsoft and Google did not have security. It's not that they don't have security. It's just that they're not set up to uh, restore data for you. They're not going oh, okay. to get that data back, just to, to clarify that a little more. And do and you think, Chris, most of us will be working okay, from home for the foreseeable go. future? 
Uh, it remains remains to be seen. I mean, it seems to change daily what uh, what's going to happen. But uh, I don't think working from home is going to disappear anytime soon because I think um, you know as people get used to this kind of stuff, they start to like it a little bit more. Uh, and maybe we'll, maybe it'll be a little more bearable when our kids are back in school. <laughs> I, I much prefer the face-to-face. -face. I can be on the TV. I can be on the stage. But I, I'm getting so tired of um, of the virtual stuff that I want to. I want to see people face to face. That's me. I guess. Oh yeah, I wasn't thinking of like the Zoom meetings. Of that I was thinking of people having the ability to be able to connect to their office from home and do their work if they decide they don't want to go in the office that day or for whatever reason. It's. I think it's. Uh, it's given people a lot more options than what they used to have. Yeah. Yeah. So um, probably everybody's got a busy day. So unless you've got any more questions, again, um, you know, please look out for some more presentation. I know we have Lisa Braun, social art, coming along next week, and she's going to be talking about how to stay active and in people's vision so people don't forget about you, people remember you, because that's important also, isn't it, that people remember who we are. If, um, you know, we go out of vision altogether because of the online stuff, we can't see people face-to-face. So Lisa will be along next week and we are looking for some more presentations if anybody's interested. So Chris, thank you again. I appreciate your no time problem. and your valuable information and I will say goodbye to everybody and have a lovely day.